back end at Micronus, taking the example of multi-chip production. The ready processed silicon wafers are supplied in dust tight boxes from the Micronus wafer fab next door. All the wafers are now put through a comprehensive range of tests with the aid of special test equipment. First of all, the so-called parameter test is conducted. This is performed with test structures specially generated for the purpose, which are arranged between the actual dice. The parameter test makes sure that the properties of the integrated circuit, such as specific transistor characteristics, comply precisely with the specifications. This test thus monitors the process parameters employed in Micronus's wafer fab. The next test is conducted on each individual die on the wafer. The electrical contacts are made with so-called probe cards which contain up to 130 needles. The individual needles have to be accurately positioned on the aluminium contact openings, which are only about 100 micrometers in size. Defective ICs are marked with a small colored dot on the wafer and eliminated at a later stage. Most Micronus ICs contain both digital and analog circuits. In a typical case, 500 tests are necessary to check these ICs, tests that are conducted in less than three seconds. In the assembly area, the tested wafers now have to be divided up into individual dice. First of all, the wafers are mounted in a metal frame with the aid of an adhesive film only 70 micrometers thick. The film that's clamped in the metal frames ensures that the dice remain in their original position even after they've been sawn apart, and that the wafer can be further processed in a reliable manner. The wafer is now aligned fully automatically and cut into individual dice with saw blades, a process also known as dicing. The saw blades are fitted with minute diamonds and are only 30 micrometers wide. They turn at more than 30,000 rotations per minute. Deionized water is used to cool the saw blade and to remove the silicon dust that's created. The individual dice are picked up by fully automatic machines with an integrated imaging system and any positioning errors are corrected. The defective dice previously marked with a small colored dot or the defective printed circuit board in the case of multi-chip assembly are left on the adhesive film. The remaining dice, or in this particular case a small printed circuit board, are bonded onto copper strips with an epoxy resin adhesive. These copper strips subsequently form the electric contact with the printed circuit board. They're also known by the technical term of lead frames. The silver conducting adhesive, which is filled with silver particles, is hardened for 45 minutes in a continuous furnace operating at 145 degrees Celsius. In multi-chip assembly, two further dice are now bonded onto the printed circuit board in a further bonding operation. One of the dice comes from the Micronus wafer fab and is processed as a diced wafer in the manner already described. The second die is a memory chip that has been purchased. It's been fully tested and is supplied on surf tapes. The fully automatic machine employed for this process is able to process both dice at one and the same time and position them with a degree of precision in excess of 25 micrometers.
To ensure the necessary high quality is achieved in the elaborate process steps performed in back-end production, expert employees and state-of-the-art equipment work right round the clock. After the silver conducting adhesive has been hardened once again during a second run through the furnace, a plasma cleaning operation takes place. This serves to remove any organic contamination on the contact surfaces of the printed circuit board or the dice. The electric contact between the aluminium contact surfaces on the dice and the fingers of the copper lead frame is achieved through a thin gold wire. This is welded on by fully automatic wire bonders at a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius with the aid of pressure and ultrasonic energy. A multi-chip requires 276 individual wire connections, which are applied in less than 50 seconds. The gold wire, which is only 25 micrometers thick, ensures a perfect electric contact. To ensure that any deviations in the process are detected as early on as possible, extensive quality inspections are carried out, such as this mechanical pull test. Statistical process control is used to keep the individual parameters within the specification limits on the basis of so-called control charts. Any deviations from the set point values are detected in this way and can be corrected without delay. This guarantees reliability, which in turn ensures that we meet our customers' quality demands. To protect the sensitive wire connections from mechanical damage and to prevent the silicon dice from corroding through moisture, all the components are molded with a plastic compound under high pressure at a temperature of 175 degrees Celsius. The plastic compound used is a thermoset which contains more than 80% ultrafine glass particles as a filler. This ensures that the difference between the coefficient of thermal expansion of the molding compound and the silicon die is kept as small as possible. The quality requirements placed on the molding compound in terms of processability, purity and specified mechanical properties are extremely high. They ensure that the finished components will operate reliably over a very long period of time. When the molded component is inspected in an X-ray microscope, a highly enlarged shadow image of the interior is seen. This serves to confirm that the molding operation has not changed the position or course of the fine gold wires. After the molding operation, the individual leads of the copper lead frame are still all connected to each other. This so-called dam bar is now cut in a stamping process.
the surface of the copper lead frame that's still bare is now electrochemically plated in the next step. This ensures that the finished components can then be further processed by the customer without any problems. The electroplated leads now have to be trimmed to the right length and given their final shape in a number of different forming stages. After this, the individual components are separated and placed in transport trays. Micronus then conducts another full check to ensure that the digital and analog circuits on all the finished components are working perfectly. This check is conducted at minus 45 degrees Celsius, at ambient temperature and at plus 95 degrees Celsius, depending on the requirements. These values simulate the minimum or maximum operating temperature of the components that can occur in a subsequent application of the customers. Components that don't comply with all the specified properties, such as if electrical parameters have been adversely affected through the molding process, are eliminated after this process step and scrapped. final step, each component is marked with a laser beam. This inscription contains the type, date of manufacture and the batch number. It's also used for precise identification in the event of a customer complaint. Before the components are taken to the sales warehouse, a check is conducted with a complex imaging system to ensure that the leads correspond precisely to the package specification. This ensures that our customers can further process the products we deliver by predominantly automatic means, and above all, it means that the soldered joints we supply are all perfect. Quality from Micronus.